So it is time for the rig of the month yet again. And we were meant to be out today doing a nice, lovely summer, solid, shallow F1 fishing. But as usual, it's gone flipping freezing, which seems about right for, for everything we're trying to do this year. But still, so we've got a, a shallow fishing video still to come because today we're at the wonderful Monk Hall fishery, which is probably the most solid fishery I've ever, ever been to in my life. It is quite simply ridiculous how many fish are in here, but that is to come. So first, what I want to talk about is, of course, the rigs for shallow fishing for F1s during the summer when fishing with maggots or casters. So pretty much, which is a, a very, very, very popular subject, especially in my area, the venues I go to. Shallow fishing for, for F1s down the middle of Snake Lakes is it's probably the way 90% of people expect to fish the matches during the summer. And although it's a massively vague and wide range of subjects when it comes to rigs for it, I, I want to loosely touch on, on the key points of the rigs. So this is not, I'm just going to not just show you one rig like we would in the winter when it's a bit more technical. When it comes to shallow fishing, you need a hell of a lot of rigs to cover potentially different situations. And that's what I'm loosely going to talk about today and go through here. So firstly, for me, when it comes to, when we're talking about shallow for F1s, I'm looking at probably... 35 inches um, and shallower. I mean, 35 inches in most snake lakey situations is about the deepest you're going to go. And I, I like breaking it down into to two different areas. In that, if I'm fishing between, say, 18 and, and 35 inches, it's all about slow falls potentially, and resistance is a massively big thing because your rig's got a lot more to fall through the water. So the resistance on your float, having nice sexy bristles, almost like winter style F1 rigs, they, they become a lot more important. Um, let's go through them rigs first. So that's, for me, two deeper rigs, what I've got today. They're all about the resistance on my float and potentially nice falling rigs. I mean, at the minute, they're all shotted properly. I'm not gonna go into the overshotting bit yet. We're gonna save that for the video that we do on the actual fishing. We're gonna talk about just the proper rigs to begin with. And for me, deeper rigs, say the nice, what are we going to call them, elongated rugby ball style um, floats seem spot on for it with the right type of bristles. And forever babbling about bristles, this is probably the key time, along with like winter delicate maggot fishing, just as is in the summer for your winter delicate shallow fishing for F1s. Um, I want a very, very little resistant bristle. So a Richie Wilson Maggie with a solid bristle is, is the one for me. It's heavy enough to support me bait off the bottom but there's very little resistance to them fish taking the bait, which we're at now, we're filming this, what we are now? We're on last last couple of days in April. And you find that there's a definite change somewhere around April to May, when the fish start behaving differently shallow, in that they get a lot more aggressive, but they also reject your bait a lot easier once they've been fished for, once they've been caught a lot. And that'll just definitely help when I'm fishing a little bit deeper on a rig that I potentially want to give me a slow fall, a really delicate bristle that the fish aren't going to feel is going to catch me a lot more fish. Give me a few more seconds to hook them fish, hook the bites before the fish spit me bait. So we're still in a funny mode that with these rigs, there's potential for a longer lash. Yeah, in this case, I've got it set at five inch. That'll fluctuate depending on the day. You've got to play about with that. Sometimes you can get away with the longer lash if they're really, really confident and they're feeding and they want it away from the pole. But we'll touch on that a bit more in a minute. Other days you need it the minimum that fishery allows. That that seems to depend with the later it gets in the year, the shorter you've got to go as a rule. But every day is different. You've got to have a play about with that. Shot in, mega, mega, mega simple. Just literally spread out stots through all my rig. Yeah, that's a 4 v 10 float. I just have number 11 spread out. Had a bit messy because they've been bashed all over the place, but I'll have one on top of my hook length and evenly spread throughout my rig. Just gives it a nice slow fall to begin with. The one thing I will say with all my F1 shallow rigs is everyone's shotted with cubes, stots, whatever you want to call them. Shot that you can move about. I don't use traditional shot because I want to have a, a more versatile rig that I can move about. I might want to bulk it. Who knows? It, it, it's... There's no fixed, this is the exact way to do it when it comes to shallow fishing. They are so moody and you need such a wide variety of rigs and variations in shotting. You need your rigs to be nice and flexible so you can mess them about. But that made me first rigs there. 4B, a 4B10 for when I'm going sort of 25 inches plus, depending on the weather. Maybe a bit um, shallower if it's really windy. The next rig, identical again, just a 3B8. Same again, a little bit shallower. It's all about covering them depth variations, which again, I'm not going to go into now, but that's the identical rig just with a 3B8 fishing. Um, five inches shallower than the other one, or six inches shallower than the other one in that case. And those style of rigs are going to cover your, as I say, 18 inches plus. 
in, in most situations without having to overshot, which is a, another way of talking about it. The next rig, when I'm 18 inches or less, I'd, I'd much, I'd expect to be using sort of dibber type floats that I'm going to catch a lot of fish on. So for them, we're on a lovely little Timmy Moore's dibber rig, which is a 0.2. And I'll use that from anywhere from sort of 18 inches right down to six inches for when the fish are really feeding well. And I'm almost certain I'm gonna need this tiny little line in between me float me pole. I'm gonna need the minimum the fishery allows, or if allowed, I'm gonna have two to three inches. Our plane's doing loop-de-loops, Andrew. So yeah, really, really short lashes in between me float me pole. That's when it becomes vital for these dibbers that just completely eliminate tangles. And once you get to that sort of yeah, I'm going to say 16, 18 inch. You've often not got to read your float as much. It tends to be you're getting a bite, so you've not got to read a bristle as much as you have when you're deeper. So you can get away with a, a less tangle obsess or tangle. What's the word, Rich? Tangle prone. tangle prone, that's one. Float that just makes you more efficient and makes the job done nice and easy. So I'm going to mention as well, though, that it's not really riggy. Is I'm going to mention my Dacron connectors as well with this, because this is where they come into it. That um, it's very, very popular to use either a bead direct onto your elastic or these tiny little Dacrons that I've been using for a long time. And that's also a vital part of this rig. As soon as you're relying on the bolt rig effect, you need that elastic to be, to be getting pulled as soon as possible without a, a floppy about Dacron, without any resistance again. And it's pulling that, the pulling a hook straight into the fish because it's direct to your elastic. There's no uh, gap in between your line and the elastic itself. Shot in for that, again, flexible. We're, we're on stots. I'm much more likely to fish this in a bulk though once I get to 18 inches and below, just because it's where the fish are going to be coming up to and feeding. They're not going to be watching a bait fall through the water when you're 18 inches or less. They don't have time. They're going to be sat at a certain depth or rising to a certain depth, turning over, taking the bait to that depth, and you're going to be getting a bite. So often a bulk's going to be the best for this. But again, versatility is the key. So we've got the stocks on again, so we can spread them out to create a slow fall if required, but a bit unlikely for that one. Um, components wise, let's, let's have a chat about that. I'm weird with components. I used to go very heavy to make it very durable, my main line. I used to fish sort of an 019. I'm definitely finding now sort of drop into like an 015 or 016, depending on how good it is, depending on how many I'm gonna catch. It makes my floats work nicer, especially with the, the first two floats that have got the solid bristles on that if you fish a too heavy line, they, they don't turn over, they're just a bit not quite right. So err on the side of a little bit more finesse, if you like, and that'll make your float work better. It'll make it turn over nicer. So you, you do lose a little bit of the uh, robustness of a rig, but it's worth it for, for having a sexier float. Hook lengths, again, depends on the day. Yeah, today's case, we've got 012 on. Every single one on this is a three inch hook length. There's no messing about. There's no need for anything longer when you're fishing shallow. And indeed with this rig, with the, the tiny sort of dibber style rig, once I get to 10 inches or maybe less, I may sort of that to a two inch even, excuse me, just to make the hook length proportional to the size of the rig. Well, that's gonna be the rig that you're using most of the time during the summer. So last up, to say these, it isn't just these rigs I'm gonna set up. They're often, if I'm fishing shallow myself, I'll have four of the deeper rigs a different variants of depth and then three or four of the shallower rigs at four inch differences so i can maintain the same distance between me float and me pole all the time but today they're just a basic cover the, the deeper ones cover the shallow ones but lastly i also like a rig with a big long lash because the more i'm finding it the more places i go it's amazing how often them fish don't come near the pole anymore because they get fish for so often shallow so what i do need now is a little tiny type rugby ball sort of float we're going to give it that in that case they are a Malmen Goldie I think they are and I might fish that anywhere between sort of eight inches and, and two foot but what it allows is a nice big length of line I can flick that past my bait but still with a very light very um, sensitive very little resistance float but because it's got a body it gives it a bit more about it so I can swing, swing it past my bait not like a, an elongated rugby ball float that you sort of you can't put that past your bait because it wants to pull back on itself all the time so having a rugby ball keeps it past me bait exactly where i need it but very very similar to the slow falling type rigs these sort of rigs that's going to be a nice strung out one that's just going to catch clever fish but doing at the back of my bait when it gets trickier later in the session also when i need to keep my pole well away from them fish because they've got moody because it's maybe really clear maybe bright i mean no wind 
that's the sort of time when them fish want to feed but they're very reluctant to fish underneath your pole tip and that's when that rig comes into that so with that covered i think it's time to get on to the fishing next thank you so much for watching you lovely lot and please please Ooh. please don't forget to like and subscribe james is about to lose his rod <laughs> this is a ginger tench i'm gonna lose me mind no was it for one foot one